Tell my bashi there's where she was. I like you. I don't see that you do it But also inside. I don't tell my name. I have all the students in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I don't just like you. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, I can't even remember. All of their names. And through it, I mean, I'm not even. And I'm going to have you sign as well. I don't imagine you go on already. Sign to be there. I will let you know. Can you make it? So that I might carry you on my heart. And my children, they're not alone. I go to know. They're strong. I'm not afraid. Amen. You are the future of this nation. I don't think my children are going to die today. And I got you. Amen. You are the future of the kingdom of God. You are the anointed of God. Amen. And therefore, you are very important. To the body of Christ worldwide. I don't think about how much you could do it. Can I do it? I need to know you come on. Amen. Myanmar is not forgotten by God. You might even be out here. Me and you can't have a name of Hoba. And Myanmar is not forgotten by the body of Christ worldwide. I don't think about any. Because I don't want to see a crypto. I can I am million. You can't have a name of Hoba. We know you are here. We know of your faith. Amen. We know of your sacrifices. Of faith. We know the tests of your faith. And we are your brothers and sisters. Amen. We believe in you. We want the best for you. And we will send the best of the word of God and the preachers of the word of God to you. September 16th last year was my 60th year of preaching the gospel. My wife, Linda, and I have preached that gospel together for 55 years. So I have been married to one wife for 55 years. I pray that for you, that God will give you a long life covenant. Linda and I have three daughters. I don't need another one. And eleven grandchildren. I don't need something else here. With number twelve on the way. I don't something on your back. Live. Two of my daughters are pastors. I don't know yet. The main thing I got to mention. I think we'll see a marriage today. One pastors a church of a thousand in Houston, Texas. I don't Houston, Texas, but Zulu Shin. They are doing the Mia Zulu Shin. See, can you? I think that's how much you are doing now. And another pastors a church of three hundred in Manchester, England. I don't Manchester, England, but Zulu Shin. I think that's how many of us are doing now. I think we are doing now. I have two American son-in-laws and one British son-in-law. Now all of you doctors, listen to me. I chose all of my son-in-laws by prophecy and brought them to my daughters. So I will tell you the stories this week of how I chose my son-in-law. And how I arranged the marriages for my three daughters. I wanted them to marry godly men. 
I wanted them to marry spirit-filled men. I wanted them to marry Bible-loving men. And I wanted them to marry men that loved me first. Because if they loved me, they would never walk out on my daughters. I wanted them to love my anointing. I wanted them to love my calling. I wanted them to love Jesus in me. And that's the kind of son-in-laws I chose. Now today, you have your paper and your pencil. The title of this first session is are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to pay the price? What price did Jesus pay? And are you willing to pay that price? All of us know that Jesus paid the price in his blood on the cross. But what price did he pay in public before he ever went to the cross? We always think about the price he paid on the cross. But long before he came to the cross, he had to pay a price for 33 years. He paid a price before his parents. He paid a price in waiting upon God. He paid a price to understand who he was. He paid a price of loneliness. He paid a price of questioning and doubts. And he paid a price of people hating him. He paid a price of people trying to stone him. He paid a price of religious leaders calling him a liar. So long before he went to the cross, he paid a price. Are you willing to pay the price? The price that Jesus paid. To become the son of God. In our eyes and in our hearts. Are you willing to pay the price to become a son or daughter of God? He came unto his own, but his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them, that means us, he gave power. Power to become the children of God. Because he paid the price today, we are the children of God. When you say, 
you pay the price for others to become the children of God in this nation? That's why God brought you to this place. You are in the Holy Ghost upper room. So this first message today is, are you willing to pay the price? For a people to become a nation, someone has to be willing to pay the price. For a church to become a strong community of faith, someone has to pay the price. Somebody is paying the price for this building to be here. Someone is paying the price for this classroom to be here. And it is a public price. And it is a private Price. How you live in private will determine how you live in public. Someone has to pay the price. Let's look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8 verse 54. Verse 54 to verse 59. ตัวเล็กตัวใหญ่ที่ผมคิดว่าจะมีจากนามุกาติอาทิตย์มาสุดเลยตัวเล็กตัวมุกตัวบางคนเลยมีตัวใหญ่ที่ผมมาสุดเ
Are you willing for no one to believe in you? Even if signs and wonders are performed through your prayer life, are you willing for nobody to know you? Isaiah said the very words Jesus thought. Lord, who has believed our message in the tomb is the arm of the Lord revealed. You remember when John the Baptist was in prison? He sent his disciples to ask, Are you really the one that was to come? Are you really the Messiah? Are you willing to have doubts in your mind as to whether Jesus knows where you are? Are you willing to struggle as John did, being in prison and saying, Jesus, do you know that I'm here? For us to be willing to pay the price, we need to know three Great principles. Principle one. A seed sold. Principle two. An hour given. Principle three. A voice heard. A seed sown, an hour given, a voice heard. Okay, that's good. And now here's where these principles are found. John chapter 12, verse 20, down to verse 31. ရှင်ကရင်ကနီးစနစ်ခန်းနဲ့နစ်ဆယ်ကနေတော့တုံးစက်တစ်ဖြစ်ပါတယ်ကျွတ်ကြပြီးတော့ကျွန်တော်တို
will cause you to overcome any doubts. Will help you to be willing to pay the price. Let's look at the first one, a seed sown. Read again verse 24 down to verse 26. I do I You are in this school so that you will know how to produce many seeds. You are called to be a disciple who produces disciples, who produces disciples, who produces disciples. I don't think we're we are seed sowers. You are the seed for a future revival in Myanmar. Churches to be planted in this nation. You are the seed for the kingdom of God to come to Myanmar. But there's one very important thing about the seed. You must be good seed. Turn to Matthew chapter 8, 13, verses 8 to 12. Matthew 13, 8 to 12. Matthew now if you read the verses before this and I know you already know them you will find that there's many kinds of soil. But there's only one kind of seed. And that seed is God created seed. And God created seed must find good soil. Good, good seed created by God and good soil brings forth an abundant harvest. That's why you're in this school. That's why you're learning to become leaders. That you can be God's good created seed looking for good soil to produce an abundant harvest. My prayer for you is that not a one of you will become bad seed.
The Apostle Paul spoke about a bad seed. He said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. We don't want you to become bad seed. We want every one of you to remain good seed, looking for good soil for the glory of God. Do you remember the words of the song? I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. My desire for you, my desire for Myanmar, that in this class, not a one of you will turn back. That you will be good seed, finding good soil for the next 60 years of your life. You are that good seed sown into the good soil of Myanmar to make a great nation. Now, how does the seed reproduce so much? Number one. How does the seed produce so much? It is receptive to the power of good soil. The seed is one. It's a God-created seed. Man cannot create a seed that will produce a great harvest. We can genetically engineer it, but God is the first creator. Amen. You are not genetically engineered. You are Holy Ghost born. Amen. You are produced by the Spirit of God. And He wants you to be sown into good soil. Amen. So the seed is receptive to the soil. Spend your leadership life looking for good soil. There's the hard soil on the pathway. There's the thorny weed soil. But we are looking for good soil. Amen. We will not waste our good seed on bad soil. They said to Jesus, why do you teach the people using parables? He said, I'm looking for open ears and open hearts. He said, there are those who close their ears and close their hearts and they will not receive my word. Look 
for open ears and open hearts. I have built 77 drug rehabilitation centers around Asia. My mentor for almost 40 years was David Wilkerson, the founder of Teen Challenge, who wrote the book The Cross and the Switchblade. So I have spent my life as an evangelist on the major, uh, on the streets of the major cities of the world. As a missionary, I first started in 1972 in Saigon, South Vietnam. I built the most modern drug rehab center in the world there in Saigon. And I built a thousand seat church along with that drug center. So I have been both a pastor and an evangelist. I started Teen Challenge Works in Singapore. In Indonesia. In Hong Kong. Hong Kong in Thailand. Thailand. In Malaysia. In Malaysia. Malaysia and in Vietnam, Vietnam, I have 27 drug rehab centers. I, I have led over 4,000 heroin addicts to Jesus Christ. So I have sown seed in good soil. But remember this. Only God can help you to see what is good soil. For many times, people said to me, why do you waste your energy on drug addicts? Why do you spend your time with alcoholics and prisoners? Because I was looking for good seed in hard place, or good soil in hard places. Only God, through the Holy Spirit, can help you to see what is good soil. The third thing is Jesus was looking for kingdom people. Receptive soil will cause the seed to grow. Open ears and open heart will cause the seed to grow. And people who have a kingdom heart will cause the seed to grow. They can be bad people as far as the world is concerned. But Jesus said his kingdom was made up of the poor, of the brokenhearted, of the prisoners, of those who were crying out for help. Kingdom people are those who want righteousness, peace, and joy as provided by the Holy Spirit. When I'm on an airplane, 
When I'm in the hotel I'm staying at. When I'm walking down the street. When I'm going shopping at the grocery store. I'm looking for somebody who wants righteousness and peace and joy as the Holy Spirit provides. Every day I'm looking for kingdom people. Amen. You never know where you're going to find them. Unless you're listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. This week, I'm going to give you the most powerful teaching on the person of the Holy Spirit. And what he taught me as an evangelist seeking for good soil. In Singapore, when I was directing the Teen Challenge Rehab Center there, at our Teen Challenge Rehab Center, I did that in I I raised my daughters there for 20 years. I know you know the family group, you know I'm not in the same job, you know people who talk bigger. And in that time, I saw a lot of good soil receive good seed. I teach my students, you know, okay, count on music, count on music, just as we are, you know, we are just like that. One kingdom heart, good soil was Jacob Koshi. And Jacob Koshi look for it. At the kick, nine and a nation and the longer, nine and a nation and music, which are doing it. Jacob Koshi was a protector of Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew. He was a protector of Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew. And I'll say, when I get a video of today, Lee Kuan Yew, but all any of you go, go ahead, guys, I'm sure we are at you today. When Lee Kuan Yew went through Singapore in his white Mercedes. He had four police officers on motorcycles on each of the four corners. They were the big Honda Golden Wings motorcycles. And Jacob Koshi was an officer on one of those. After serving as a protector of the Prime Minister for many years, he then became an undercover narcotics agent. But Jacob got into trouble financially. So he began to steal heroin out of the lockup room. Heroin. Steal heroin. Heroin. Oh, heroin. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And he began to sell it on the side to solve his financial problems. Now here is a protector of the prime minister, now a police officer turning bad. He gets caught and sentenced to 15 years in Changi Prison in Singapore. My Teen Challenge workers were working in the prison. Here was bad soil. Jacob had put many men in that same prison. So he could be killed in prison. So he came up with a plan. When the warden of the prison 
came to see this famous protector, the prime minister, former police officer, now prisoner. Jacob jumped off the bed and he threw his arm around the warden and began choking him. And it did what Jacob wanted. And got him thrown into solitary confinement. Now he was going to live. Nobody could kill him in solitary confinement. Jacob had a smoking habit. He was able to get tobacco smuggled in to solitary confinement. But he had no smoking paper. But we had put the Gideon Bible in his cell. So he tore page after page of the Bible and began smoking the Bible. Over the period of months in prison, he smoked Matthew. Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> now he's in the book of Acts. Wow. And one day as he's smoking the book of Acts, <laughs> his cigarette Bible burns out. Out of boredom, he reads the words that are there. And it says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. And there it stops. And Jacob remembered when he was a 10-year-old boy. In his community, a Bible lady came. And she gave prizes away for people who memorized verses of the Bible. He said, this is from that book. And the next day, he asked my staff member, can you bring me a full Bible? And he cried out, Jesus, if you are the one in this book, change my heart. And for the past 23 years, Jacob Koshi has been the director of Teen Challenge for all of the Philippines. You never know where you're going to find kingdom soil. God does not look at the outward appearance. He looks upon the heart. Find kingdom soil. Number four. Number four. Receptive good soil, open ears and hearts, and on the people. He was looking for word people. The seed is the word of God. You are called to sow the word of God. You are called to say what the word says about you. You are called to live according to the word.
word of God. I started preaching when I was 15 years old. My dad was a pastor. So I had a lot of opportunities to serve in the local church just like you. So I started preaching at a very early age. My papa pastored until he was 83 years of age. Now I'm 76, so I got a ways to go. Amen. And I'm going to keep coming back to Myanmar until I'm 101. If the Lord tarries his coming, every year I'm coming back right here. that you're going to establish throughout Myanmar. So my father, when he was 83, called me on Saturday night. He said, son, tomorrow I'm going to retire from my pulpit. I'm going to preach my farewell sermon. I said, Papa, what are you going to preach on? He said, I'm going to preach on the grace of God is sufficient. Oh, that's wonderful, I said, living by God's grace for 83 years. He had been preaching for 15 minutes. When he said, church, the grace of God is sufficient. He took three deep breaths. And then he died. He died preaching his farewell message. He stepped from the pulpit into the presence of God. Now that's the way I want to go. Not today. Not this week. <laughs> <laughs> so don't clap your hands. <laughs> when I started preaching at 15, I wrote in my Bible four things that I would never compromise. I drew a line on the ground. And I said, I will never step across this line. If you do not determine now what you will not compromise, when life becomes hard, you'll compromise anything. So draw a line on your paper and say what I will not compromise. Draw, draw a line all the way across your paper. And on top of it write what I will not compromise. Number one. Number one. Jesus is Lord. I will not compromise that. Number two, the Bible is the word of God. I will not compromise that. Number three, faith is the victory. 
I will not live a judgmental life. I will not hurt other people. I will not hurt the body of Christ. Jesus is Lord. The Bible is the word of God. Faith is the victory and love. Never Amen. The seed that we sow is the word of God. Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. Just to remind us again of what we've already read. 23. When you sow the word of God, the kingdom of God will grow. When you sow the word of God in those villages you're going to. The kingdom of God will come to that village. But listen to what the word says here. It says it must be understood. They hear the word and understand it. This is discipleship. We are called to sow the seed of the great commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your neighbors yourself. That's the great commandment. But we're also called to sow the word of God to, in terms of the great commission. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples, teaching them to obey. So we sow the seed of loving God, loving our neighbors, and going and making disciples. Write this down. Evangelism plus discipleship equals community. Uh, Evangelism plus discipleship equals community or the local church planted. When we sow the good seed of the word of God, you do not get an instant harvest. <laughs> the farmer must work long and hard to get the good harvest. He plants the seed and he waits for the harvest. Some sow some water but God gives the increase and you do not get it overnight I want to ask you this question are you willing to pay the price to get your harvest notice these price paying things 
about the seed. The seed must go into a dark place are you willing to go into a dark place Jesus had to go into a dark place in the garden of Gethsemane to get your life turned around to become the bread of life Jesus had to cry out Father, is there another way? I'm in a dark place in this garden. All my disciples are asleep. I'm sweating drops of blood. I don't know if you're hearing me or not. You tell me I must take all the sins of Myanmar upon myself. I've never disobeyed. I've never lied. I've never cheated. He that knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Are you willing to go into a dark place for your neighborhood? Yes. Are you willing to go into a dark place for this country? You sow seed in your village, but you get no instant harvest. I'm going to go back to Yangon. I'm going to go back to my Bible school classes. It's too dark out here. The ground is too hard here. I've been put too deep into the ground. It's dark. I hurt. Nobody cares. Are you willing to pay the price of a dark place? You better be because you will go to a dark place. No sea, no sea escapes the dark place. You underline that in your notes. One day you will look back and remember he said no sea escapes a dark place. You will, you will in your church planting, in your evangelism, in your service for God, find yourself in a dark place. Are you willing to pay the price? Jesus was. It was not the cross, it was before the cross. Before your church becomes what God wants it to be, you will have to be sown in the dark place. When the farmer goes to sow the seed, he has a, a, a bag around his body's arm. And he's reaching in to get the seed. Here in this Bible school, you're collecting your seed. Get a bag full of seed. Collect all the seeds you can. The seed of the word of God. The seed of prayer and intercession. The seed of open ears and open hearts. 
You're going to need all the seeds you can get. It reaches into the bag. And he scatters the seed. Sometimes you don't know the seed, the, the soil that it's going to land on. Now we're in a dark place. Yes, we are. Come on. This, this, is, this is an example. Illustration. Illustration. <laughs> Where the seed's going to land. But God does. Yeah. 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 That's why we have to know that Psalms 27, uh, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait and expect the Lord. You must sow the seed and wait on God to direct its growth. So when he carries that bag of seed, you may be the only one that's doing the sowing. Others may have left your city. Others, because of the dark place, gave up. And you're the only seed sower left. Pioneers, many times, face seed sowing alone. Number three. The seed goes into a dark place. You sow the seed and it goes to many places. And the seed has to die. There has to be a death to self before there can be resurrection life. Amen. He said, anyone who loves your life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it. The kingdom of God teaches love and hate. Love the life of God, hate the life of self. Not hate your life. Hate the selfishness. Paul wrote in the book of Romans. He said, that which I don't want to do, I find myself doing. And that which I try to do better, I cannot. He said, oh wretched man that I am. Who will save me from the body of selfishness of this death? And then he said, the answer is, I thank God through the Holy Spirit working within me, the life of Christ will be mine. There is now therefore no condemnation to those who walk after the spirit of life and not after the flesh. Paul said, all things are all things are lawful. Lawful. Oh. But not all things are profitable. He said, I bring my body under subjection. I fight with myself. When I see laziness coming up in me, I knock laziness out. 
When I see fear coming up inside of me, I'm not When I see jealousy and pride and arrogance, I turn and run from it. I will not let self control me. What's the big part about discipleship? It's discipline. And I got A disciple is a disciplined person. When I started out as a young man, learning to follow Jesus, we had this saying, no Bible, no breakfast. If you don't read the word of God to start your day, you don't eat breakfast. It was teaching me to discipline self. To die to my desires to say, I want to eat first, I want to eat first. And the Holy Spirit is saying, if you're going to be a man of God and a kingdom man and a seed sower, then eat the word of God. You need the bread of life. อัลเลลูยาอีกเนี่ยไม่ผิดนะสวยแล้วก็เราเชิญเราดูคลิปนี้สวยๆเนาะพยายามที่จะโลกบ่ได้ว่าอายุโซซาตุมาอีเมนอ